Let's draw the Lewis structures of these five different molecules. Now, in the previous video, I went through the steps of how to draw Lewis structure. And if you haven't watched that video and you're new to drawing Lewis structures, you should probably back up and watch that video because it will provide more detail. In this video, I am gonna go pretty quick. So let's start with CH2F2. The first thing we need to do is count up the valence electrons. So let's go to the periodic table and see what we're working with. We have carbon, which has four, hydrogen, which is one, and fluorine, which is seven. So over here, we have one carbon atom with four electrons. We have two hydrogen atoms with one electron each. And we have two fluorine atoms with seven electrons each. So that gives us a total of 20 electrons to work with. We are going to arrange the atoms. Remember the first atom in the formula is the central atom and all of the other atoms are arranged around it. So we're just gonna put the other atoms around it. And you might be wondering, how do I know what sort of pattern to use? Like, should the fluorines be opposite of each other or is it okay for them to be side by side? Should a fluorine be up here? None of that stuff matters. Don't even worry about that at all. Put them wherever you wanna put them and connect all of the atoms with single bonds. So those single bonds used two, four, six, eight electrons and we have 12 electrons left. Next, we want to satisfy the octet for our outer atoms, except for hydrogen. Remember, hydrogen only likes to have two electrons. So both of these hydrogen atoms already have their own version of the octet. They have as many electrons as they want. Fluorine right now, this fluorine right here has two electrons. So it needs six more. So we'll put three lone pairs around that fluorine. And the same with our other fluorine, it has two. It needs six more and that used up all of our electrons. So we've accounted for all of our electrons. Our next step is to make sure that our inner atom has the octet. This inner carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. And so this, this Lewis structure is actually done. All of the atoms have their octet, except for the hydrogen, which has two. All 20 electrons have been placed into this structure in various places. And so this is an accurate and acceptable Lewis structure. And we move on to the next example. NF3. So going back to the periodic table to see where these atoms are, nitrogen has five valence electrons and fluorine has seven. Three times seven is 21 plus five is going to be 26 valence electrons that we have to work with. Again, that's three times seven for the fluorine and then adding five for the nitrogen is 26 electrons. Arrange these atoms. We're gonna put nitrogen in the center because it comes first in the formula. And then the three fluorines are going to go around it, just kind of however you feel like arranging them and connect all of those atoms with a single bond. Actually, I'm gonna to try to move this out of the way of my subtraction. So those three single bonds that we used right there, that takes six electrons away one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're left with 20. Now we want to work on the octet of our outer atoms. All of our outer atoms currently have two, so they each need two more, two or six more, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So we have two electrons left and all of the outer atoms have their octets. So now we move on to the inner atom. This inner atom has two, four, six. It needs two more electrons. And this time, this first time we've seen this, we actually have two more electrons to give. So those last two electrons will go on to the nitrogen as a lone pair. We have used all of the electrons. We have given every atom an octet. So this structure is complete. And let's move on to CO2. Carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons, and we have two of them, so that's 12 total electrons from the oxygens, 16 valence electrons for the CO2 molecule. The carbon atom comes first, so that means it's the center atom in this formula. 
with the oxygen atoms arranged around it, connect those atoms with single bonds. Those two single bonds used two, four electrons, so we have 12 electrons left. Now we work on the octets of our outer atoms. Each oxygen has two electrons, so it wants six more, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and that used up all of our electrons. We cannot put any more electrons in this structure. Now we need to focus on our central atom, our inner atom. This carbon has two, four electrons. It needs four more. In this case, remember, we are going to pick a lone pair from any one of the outer atoms. We're gonna pick a lone pair, and we're gonna change that lone pair into a double bond. So I'm gonna just choose this lone pair and I'm gonna make that double bond in between the oxygen and the carbon. Let's double check our octets. Oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Carbon has two, four, six. So carbon needs two more electrons, which means we just have to do this process again. Now here's where things maybe get kind of tricky. Um, once we have already moved one lone pair in, uh, do we take another lone pair from the same atom and put a double bond, or now a triple bond? Or do we go pick on the other oxygen atom? In general, Mother Nature likes symmetry, so let's try to keep this molecule as symmetrical as possible. In future videos, I am going to be talking with more detail about how to make that difficult decision about which, electron, which lone pair to turn into a double bond. But for now, let's just try to keep things symmetrical, and let's count up our octets. 2, 4, 6, 8 for the carbon, and 2, 4, 6, 8 for the outer oxygen. This structure is done. Moving on to our next example. This is HCN. Now, when I've told you that the very first atom in the formula is almost always the central atom, there's one exception to that, and that is when the first atom is a hydrogen. It's pretty common for the first atom um, in a molecule to be a hydrogen atom. Like we've got two examples right here where hydrogen is coming first in the formula, but hydrogen is never going to be the central atom of any molecule. It's actually impossible for hydrogen to be in the center because hydrogen is only capable of forming one bond. So if you see hydrogen coming first in the molecular formula, just ignore that hydrogen and move on to the next atom. That is your central atom. Just remember again that that is because hydrogen cannot form multiple bonds, so it cannot be a center atom. The hydrogen and the nitrogen will go around this carbon. So we'll draw them like this, kind of make a straight line. I realized I haven't counted up my electrons yet. Hydrogen has one valence electron, carbon has four, and nitrogen has five. So this has a total of 10 valence electrons. So back to the, our structure here, we're gonna connect our atoms with single bonds that used two, four electrons. So we have six left. Now we're gonna work on the octets of our outer atoms, but not for hydrogen. Hydrogen only likes to have two electrons, so hydrogen is happy. We're gonna focus on nitrogen. Nitrogen has two, it wants six more, two, four, six. And that uses up all of our electrons that we have available. Our nitrogen does have an octet, two, four, six, eight. Now we're gonna turn our attention to the central atom, carbon. Carbon has two, four electrons, but it needs some more, it needs four more. Because we've run out of electrons, we need to pick a lone pair from the nitrogen and move that lone pair in to make a double bond. Just like that. And now let's see where we're at. Carbon has two, four, six, so it still doesn't have enough. Nitrogen, let's double check it, two, four, six, eight. So nitrogen is still doing good. We do need to give two more electrons to the carbon atom. In this previous example, I told you to don't pick on the same molecule twice. Let's even things out, make it symmetrical. Well, unfortunately, in this example, we have to pick on nitrogen twice. Hydrogen has nothing to give. You doesn't have a lone pair that we can turn into a double bond. So we're gonna have to take one more lone pair off of this nitrogen and turn it into, now we're looking at a triple bond. Carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons. Nitrogen has two, four, six, eight electrons. And this structure is done. 
We're down to our last molecule. Let's start by adding up the valence electrons. Hydrogen has one, and we have two hydrogens there, plus four for the carbon and six for the oxygen. That is a total of 12 valence electrons for us to work with. When hydrogen comes first in the formula, we ignore it, move on to the next atom, which is carbon, and then we have our hydrogens and our oxygen that are just kind of arranged somehow around the carbon atom. And remember, don't worry at all about where you're choosing to draw these outer atoms. There is no rule about where you choose to draw your oxygen, if it's here or up here or over here, you can put it wherever you want to put it. Connect all the outer atoms to the inner atom with a single bond. That used two for six electrons. So that leaves us with six more to work with. We'll focus on the outer atoms octets. Starting with hydrogen, hydrogen only wants two and hydrogen has two. So the hydrogens are both happy. Our oxygen has two electrons, so it needs six more in order to get up to eight. And that used up all of our electrons. We have none left. Let's focus on the carbon atom in the middle. Carbon has two for six. It needs two more. So let's grab one of the lone pairs off of the oxygen, turn it into a double bond, and double check everything. Carbon has two, four, six, eight, and our oxygen still has two, four, six, eight. So this structure also is complete.